And that's my question to the church today and to myself. What do we really mean when we talk about intentional praise? What is it to really praise the Lord? And as I share with you in this exposition today, I will share three stories, real life stories, of individuals in my lifetime and in my ministry and travels whom I really believe understand what it means to praise the Lord. So when we talk about intentional praise, we're defining intentional as that which is done on purpose. Can we say amen? amen. amen. It is deliberate. Yes. It is calculated. It is meant. It is knowing. It is willful. And it is premeditated. And so when we read the passage this morning in Psalm 34, where I will be focusing on a lot, just the first three or four verses, where David says, I will bless, say it with me, I will bless the Lord at all times. Can we say that again? I will want Lord at all his praise shall continually be in what? My mouth. In other words, my praise in a, is an expression of gratitude and respect toward God. Can we say amen? Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. Wherever I am, I will what? Bless the Lord. So there are few Hebrew words in the Bible that are translated as praise. We see the word yada, giving thanks or to confess with raised hands. We see the word Barak, which speaks of quiet voice. Toda, Shabbat, shouting for joy. But believe me, brothers and sisters, these act of praise is not that which is forced out of you by a moderator. It is that which comes from within you because of what you have experienced. Let's say amen. amen. And so the question that we must ask today is, have you taken the time to praise the Lord today? Have you taken the time to praise the Lord today. I'm not talking about what was said to you by the moderator by saying, let's praise the Lord. I'm talking about that which was premeditated, calculated, willful, knowing, deliberate, because you have experienced something from the master. You have experienced his hand in your life. You have experienced the touch of his hand. You have experienced miracles. Miracles that sometimes nobody knows about. Situations in your life that perhaps you have not spoken about. But when you look at what God has done, you might be in the kitchen, but you're praising the Lord. Amen. You might be driving, but you're praising the Lord. You might be cleaning, but you're praising the Lord. Because
cause he has done great things for you. Let me hear you say amen. So David went on and he said in Psalm 138, I will praise you with my whole heart. And so brothers and sisters, here today, I want to challenge you to understand that when we commit to worship God, you are actually stating that your choice to praise the Lord will not be affected by the changes in your life. Can you say amen? amen. It will not be affected by the changes in your life and it will not be affected by the situation that you go through. Because praise is what you do. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. So again, I, I repeat Psalm 34. I will praise you at all times. I will constantly speak your praises. I will boast in the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Let all who are discouraged take heart. Yes. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Yes. Let us exalt his name together. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's what it really means to praise the Lord. It is to boast of his greatness. It's to tell of his mighty acts. It's to tell of his wondrous work. It's to tell how even in your darkest night there is joy in your heart. There are many people in our church who are going through difficult times, they will never speak of it, but they know how to praise the Lord. They know how to go down on their knees and thank God despite their circumstances. And so we may feel sometimes and so the pressures of life bombards us. Worry and fear threatens our peace and our joy. But when our minds are focused on Jesus, rather than our circumstances, a song rises in our heart. It's a song of praise. Yes. And it becomes intentional. Yes. It becomes deliberate. And it becomes calculated. And nobody can understand how you praise the Lord yes. in your situation. Yes. But you can praise Him because something is happening that nobody can see. And so, I want to remind you that intentional praise doesn't happen when we turn up here on a Sabbath morning. It doesn't happen when we get excited at the sound of the music. And nothing is wrong with getting excited at the sound of the music. Nothing is wrong. It doesn't happen when you feel that you have received an increase in salary or promotion. Intentional praise is a lifestyle. Amen. Can we say amen? amen? Intentional praise is a lifestyle fueled by a deep passion to worship God because he is suffering. Amen. Can we say amen? amen. We worship him because he's what? Suffering. And we 
worship him because he's suffering and even in the midst of our adversities and our Monday life, we still worship him. Amen. We still praise him. We still dance for him. We still rejoice in him. Despite what we are going through, we have intentional praise. Can we say amen? Amen. My mother told me, and pardon me to talk about her again. My mother told me that when she received Jesus in her heart, there was so much praise that even when she didn't have what to wear, she walked in what she had to a sister's house and say, lend me some of your clothes, let me go and praise the Lord. Intentional praise says, nothing stops you from praising the Lord. No circumstance, no situation, nothing you are going through. Sometimes our brethren come to church and they sit and they mourn and they worry and they fret because they say nothing is happening for you. If you look in your life, you will realize that something is happening for you and you must praise the Lord. I wash them, I am alive. Amen. 